morning. I'm Steve Knapp, the 16th president of the George Washington University. And I can't be here in person today to greet you, but I'm, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to campus and to wish you a, an exciting and educational and a, uh, an engaging time at your first colonial uh, inauguration, your first introduction for many to the George Washington University. Enjoy the weekend, get to know the city, and I look forward to seeing all of you in the fall and then again on Colonial's weekend. Thanks very much. I was wondering what one piece of advice do you have for the incoming freshman class? Well, you know, I, I think one of, the, one of the best pieces of advice I can give to students when they arrive is really get to know faculty. Get to know faculty personally, get to know them on a one-to-one -one basis. You know, students sometimes think that if they're in a, whether, even if they're in a small class, but sometimes even if they're in a larger class, they feel that, you know, the students, uh, the faculty won't have an interest in them individually and won't want to get to know them. I think the opposite of that is true. I, th I would say go to those office hours, you know, send the emails, ask questions in class, ask questions after class. Besides academic excellence, what do you feel are some of the distinguishing characteristics of the incoming freshman class? I think it is a very diverse uh, class. You know, we, we're, we draw from all around the United States. We draw internationally. I think we have, a, we, we, we now very much reflect the diversity of the U.S. population. Uh, so I think that's, that's important. Um, we have, um, something that's a little unusual this year, we have, we have more engineering students than we did last year. And I think that's, uh, that suggests, I think, the importance of technology. Uh, and technological literacy. One of the things that I've, I've talked about quite a bit is even students who aren't majoring in a field like engineering or aren't science majors, and if they're interested in political science or business or, or you know, whatever it might be, if you look at what we have to do to address uh, you know, food shortages, uh, the kinds of decisions that have to be made about the way cities grow in, a, in an intelligent way as we you know, sprawl out into the countryside and how we, how we address the issues that that creates in terms of transportation, challenge and everything else, all of those have, uh, have technological dimensions that I think it's important for students to know. So I'm encouraged that students are coming with a very broad range of interests, including those in some fields that aren't as, as traditionally associated with GW. So it sounds like you know GW students very well, but what can we expect from you? One of the things that I'm, I'm emphasizing is uh, we do want to continue to uh, improve our programs uh, academically across all the dimensions of that, and that means strengthening our advising programs for students. Uh, I've heard a lot about that from students, and we've been working on it uh, with the deans this year, and I think we're making some real progress. We're taking a look at building a sense of community on the campus itself. At the same time, we want to increase our impact as a university, as a research university, and the contributions we can make, not just in the sciences and engineering, where people often think of, of research, but also across the whole range of, of intellectual endeavors. So why don't you tell us about your college experience? I think it was a different, uh, different era. For one thing, you know, uh, parents in general were much less involved, and you wouldn't have had parents showing up for a student orientation uh, experience of uh, like colonial inauguration. We didn't really have experiences like that. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there were some. There were some. I mean, I had a very good time there. I was a musician at the time, so I was very heavily involved in extracurricular activities, particularly in in the area of music. Uh, of course, I became passionately interested in, interested in one of the fields I was studying there, which happened to be English literature, and that's why I went on to graduate school and became an English, uh, an English professor, ultimately. Could you tell us more, maybe, about your own background and how you ended up in the role of a university president? I was involved in various administrative roles, sort of at the departmental level, but not really a, a dean or anything of that kind, and, uh, and was invited, actually, to become the dean of arts and sciences at the uh, Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. And until that time, I'd never even thought about being a dean. And I, I, it was only when I explored it and looked into it, and I, I began to become interested in that position. That was the first full-time administrative position that I ever uh, uh, chose. And uh, then it was after that, uh, I spent a few years in that role. And then there was at one point, uh, I was asked to take on the provost role, which is the sort of the dean of deans, the person that all the deans report to at Johns Hopkins, and kind of a deputy president role there. And then uh, after being in that job for 10 years, was invited to look at, at, at this position. And again, I knew something about the university, so I was intrigued. I've heard both yourself and other administrators within GW speak about the 20-year plan. What are some other ideas and initiatives that the university is going in? The 20-year campus plan is an important part of an overall effort to really uh, um, raise the profile of the university as a research university, as I was discussing a little bit earlier. You know, it, it's a way in which I think we can make our education that we're offering our students even more exciting because I think that students want to work with faculty who are at the forefront of their disciplines and that's something that's exciting to do. We have the benefit here that we can 
bring in experts from the community that surrounds us. You know, we have a greater concentration of experts in a huge range of fields here than really any other part of the country. And I think that's an, that's an ideal resource for us to draw into the university to enhance what we're accomplishing here. So I've been working on building partnerships with the institutions that surround us, whether it's the Smithsonian uh, institutions, this extraordinary network of museums, whether it's the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund that are right here, the World Health Organization, uh, the American Red Cross. These are all institutions that are right on our doorstep. As you point out, it's, 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 not, just a, it's not just for today and tomorrow. It's a 20-year vision that we have, which just has to do with developing this campus. At the same time, we're developing our research campus in Northern Virginia, the Loudoun County campus, which is just north of Dulles Airport. And we're trying to do research there that's complementary with the kinds of activities, educational and research activities that we have here on this campus. Drawing from your own personal experience of sending your own children off to college, what is some advice that you would offer to nervous parents here at Colonial Inauguration? I would say, you know, uh, not to worry too much about uh, what particular field that your uh, daughters and sons are interested in, that you may see them changing their majors several times, uh, and, uh, and that's okay because the reality is, and I mean, you know, sometimes people think that this isn't true, but it really is, that any field that they want to go into later in life, what's, what's really going to matter is that they do something they love doing as undergraduates and are successful in that, in that field. It's not going to matter, uh, you know, uh, medical schools would love to get people who are music majors, law school would love to get people who are physics majors. Uh, you know, there isn't that, 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 sometimes there's a sense that you have to specialize in what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life when you're an undergraduate. I really have not found that to be true. And I would say that you want to encourage uh, your sons and daughters to experiment. President Knapp, we know that you're moving into 1925 F Street later this summer. So what are your thoughts on sharing a block with half of the freshman class? And are there any plans for a block party? Well, oh, yeah, we'll have, we'll have lots of opportunities, I think, to get together. And I'm sure that, you know, the neighbors keep saying how great this is because they know that the whole neighborhood is going to become much quieter once I'm living there. <laughs> and I've, I've expressed a little bit of skepticism about that. I know you'll be holding office hours this fall. Come September, where will the freshmen be able to find you? I'll be in uh, Rice Hall, and I've, I have office hours uh, for students, and you know, there is kind of a little sign up there, procedure to go through, because we've got a lot of students, and I can't see everybody all at once. But I also, I, I will say that I have lots of other occasions in which I engage with students, even outside of those office hours per se. Uh, I do make a point of getting to lots of different meetings, not just with student leaders, but other events in which students are present. And I'm always happy to have people uh, contact me if they want to get in touch with me about some issue. They can certainly work through my chief of staff who will, who will you know, make sure that if, if I can't deal with an issue directly, we'll get somebody who can. President Epp, I have another question for you, and I know it's very important for me, and I'm sure it's in the back of the minds of, of every freshman as, as our new president. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Yeah, that's actually a good question. Favorite flavor of ice cream? Yeah, um, that's a bit of a trick question, I think. Uh, it, it, it does vary a little bit. When I was when I was growing up, it was always strawberry. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, I think strawberry is a good choice. Maybe I'll stick with strawberry then. There you go. All right.